hello, my name is Matthew, and I read The Robbers by Frederick Schiller. This is a 18th century German tragic play, and I read it sort of as an epilogue to finishing The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky. The play is uh, referenced um, in the novel, and it's a play that is full of uh, treachery and deceit and violence murder. One of the things that makes it um, interesting to read with the brothers Karamazov in mind is that among all of those things and many others, it's also a play about obsession and jealousy. Um, the play is a story of um, a family. It's uh, the father who is a count and his uh, oldest son who has a fiance and uh, the younger son. The youngest son is resentful towards his father for um, not favoring him. He is resentful towards his brother for being the oldest and being more successful and more handsome and for having a fiance, having someone that loves him. and. At the very beginning of the play, we see this obsession and jealousy and treachery play out. Uh, the older son is away from the castle, and the youngest son uh, takes the opportunity to lie to his father and tell him stories and start uh, manipulating the world around him in order to uh, gain advantages. He, t he tells his father, the youngest son tells his father while the oldest son is away, that while he's away, instead of um, being successful and getting his education and being a productive member in society, instead of those things, he, the older son has joined a band of robbers and has become a murderer. And the youngest son convinces his father that the only thing to do to save the family's good name is to disown and disinherit the older son. And the father is filled with great uh, sadness and remorse, but he listens to the lies of his son and consents to have him disinherited. And there's a message sent off, written by the youngest son, which is uh, cruel and heartless. And the older son, while he is away and he is uh, studying at school and thinking about how he is going to be a productive member of society and uh, be successful, and he has his dreams and aspirations, uh, his whole future ahead of him, he receives this letter and finds out that his father has disowned him and disinherited dis him. Ultimately, he uh, does join the band of robbers. And the, old, the youngest son still isn't done yet. He's still not happy. He wants to marry uh, his, older, his older brother's uh, fiance. And when she rebukes him, he then goes to his father and says, th through deceit and disguise, he has a messenger show up and say that now his older son has been murdered. And the father uh, thinks, and the younger son now, as soon as his father faints, declares him dead and essentially has him buried alive. And he goes to the fiance and says, now that your uh, future husband is dead and now that my father is dead, I am the Count of the Castle, and now you must marry me." All of this news gets back to uh, the older son while he's away. Now he's a murderer and a robber. There's a whole other part of this play about the robbers and rebellion and raging against society. But the older son now uh, has to go back to the castle. and. Um, right wrongs and uh, confront his brother. There's never, there never is a confrontation. And the younger son finds out that his uh, brother is now back at the castle. 
he goes to a servant, a 70-year-old man who's a good Christian and God-fearing and has been good his whole life serving this family. And he tells him that he must kill the older brother. And <clears throat> there is this uh, conflict inside of this 70-year-old man. He's never had to do a wrong thing. He's never thought about murder, but he has this uh, dilemma. If he doesn't murder uh, the son, he will be murdered himself. He doesn't go through with it, but he does agree. He does make that concession. The robbers come into town and um, when there is a confrontation with the youngest son who has been doing all of these manipulations and um, throughout the whole play only being ly lying and being deceitful, the youngest son commits suicide. And so there's never a final confrontation or resolution between the brothers. The father um, was buried alive, but he escapes. We find out that he um, does see his um, oldest son who's still living again. And the father ends up dying again. And the fiance who finally meets and gets to see her fiance who is uh, now a murderer and a robber instead of having a love story where they get together the older son murders his fiance because he is a murderer and a robber and he then turns himself into the authorities of the time so there's no um, peaceful resolution this is a story uh, told with uh, force and power. It's a dark, unhappy tale. Um, nothing peaceful or happy comes of it. It's just murder and violence and lies begetting lies and deceit begetting deceit. Um, and Dostoevsky was reading this and the characters of the Karamazov brothers were reading this and there's uh, really interesting similarities and parallels between this family and the family members of the Karamazov family. Um, it's a fast-paced, really fun, exciting uh, play. It moves swiftly. Um, we, we spend time with the, the robbers and learn how awful they are and how uh, they're no better than the deceitful youngest brother. Um, they uh, lay siege to a nunnery and do other, um, have other violent acts. Um, and it's quite beautiful. There are uh, lute songs that are played throughout. Um, it's a great, great play. Uh, Frederick Schiller, um, so, The Robbers by Frederick Schiller. Um, let me know if you've uh, read the play. Uh, let me know if you've read any of his other plays, um, Don Carlos, or um, is it Mary Stewart, um, Wallstein, uh, or his poetry. He was a contemporary of Goethe. They had a complicated friendship. And uh, that's what I'll say about uh, The Robbers by Frederick Schiller. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment if you would like. And thank you for watching.